Secrecy has always surrounded the invention and development of new technologies, especially when the driving force behind them has been the military. During the Second World War, the top secret code-breaking base at Bletchley Park became the home for a closely guarded piece of new technology. Here, teams of code breakers deciphered encrypted messages from German high command and forged what became a devastatingly effective relationship with the world's first programmable electronic computer, Colossus. Designed by English engineer Tommy Flowers, 10 of these computers were in operation at the base and the advantage they and the code breakers gave to the Allied forces probably shortened the war by around two years. After the war, all the machines, along with their drawings, were destroyed. Maintaining secrecy was crucial to the very end. Decades on, Bletchley Park now plays host to the National Museum of Computing. The centrepiece of the museum is a replica of Colossus, built by a team led by Tony Sale. Tony, given that all these machines were destroyed after the war and the whole thing was shrouded in secrecy, how on earth did you manage to build this one? Well, I managed to come across uh, eight black and white photographs uh, which had been kept at the end of the war and ten fragments of circuit diagram kept illegally by engineers, as engineers always do. And that enabled me to actually make a start on the rebuild, 15 years, and here it is beginning to work now. This looks like the data input end to me. Yes, this is the data input end here. Um, what we have here is a radio intercept coming from Germany, uh, intercepted on radio receivers, punched onto paper tape, and then loaded onto Colossus there as an endless loop. And that's being read optically there by Colossus at 5,000 characters a second. That's the data going into Colossus. Colossus has got no memory. The data goes in there over and over again. And then Colossus is using its 2,500 valves as logic circuits in order to analyse the ciphertext, in order to work out the wheel positions used on the remote machine by the German operator to encipher that message. Because that's what you've got to find to be able to decipher it. Can we look at the programming? Yes. Well, that's done on these uh, switch panels over here. And uh, the, the data flows from the paper tape reader into Colossus, into all its logic circuits. And it's comparing these patterns against the ciphertext and looking for the maximum score which tells you you've found the correct position of the pattern. Mm -hmm. And that is done on the switch panels here. First of all, this is the lamp panel which is showing the output of the calculations all the way down the tape. So the rhythm of Colossus is join, 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 and in that interval, Colossus has done Boolean calculations on 6,000 characters all the way down that tape and put the results onto the lamp panels here. And when you're doing it for real, then what you're doing is you're stepping the possible wheel start position round every time the tape goes round and you're looking for the maximum score. It's found the maximum and it's printed it on the typewriter. And you've got to find 12 wheel positions. So mm -hmm. that could take anything up to six hours going over and over the ciphertext, analyzing it. And when you've got all the wheel positions out, then you take those positions through to the tunny machine, read in the ciphertext, and if you've got it right, out comes the German decrypt. Wonderful. And this machine, it's valve technology, yes? It's first generation machine? Valves. Two and a half thousand valves on this machine, eight kilowatts of power. Four electric fires. Yes, that's right. So it gets very, very hot in this room indeed. And the wrens who operated Colossus, uh, not being uh, wasteful of anything, they used to put a clothesline across the top of Colossus <laughs> and dry their smalls above it. Tommy Flowers knew that valves were very reliable, providing you didn't switch them on and off. Mm -hmm. That's what broke the valve in your radio or television set. So in wartime, the Colossi were assembled and then never switched off. Now, we can't do that because of the 8 kilowatts. And so we've got a variable transformer, Variac, which brings the heaters up very, very slowly and takes them down again. And that protects the valve filaments. So on a 2,500 valve machine, valve failures only about four or five a year, which is quite remarkable. Mm. It's a remarkably reliable machine. Colossus is one of many computers housed here. Looking at these early machines, you can see an absence of things we take for granted nowadays, like interactivity, monitor screens and portability. All these came about gradually as technology evolved.